uh, Adidas CPI program with uh, Samir Amzani, who will join us on stage. Hello, Samir. Are you able to join? Yeah. Hello. How are you? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good, good, really good. And uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to know how to build better API at scale and knowing your story and the Adidas uh, uh, story there. Uh, yeah, the stage is yours for 20 minutes plus uh, plus questions. Thank you, Samir. Enjoy. Okay, guys. So hello and welcome to API Days Paris. So my topic today is how to build better APIs at scale. So first, let me introduce myself. So. My name is Samir Amzani. I've been working in the API field now for more than, than 10 years. I've moved from managing few APIs in startup to managing and leading a complex API landscape with Adidas that have more than 400 APIs. So in this talk, I want to share some learnings, best practices on how to build a successful API program that enables you to build better APIs at scale. I'll be mainly focusing on uh, technology here as um, APIs uh, relies also, also on the culture of your company uh, and how your business is structured. So let's begin by the mother of all problems uh, for companies today. Um, the problem number one is how we build applications faster and cheaper. This problem has been so intense now with the global pandemic, so we all know that we need to build applications 10 times faster for our users. Now with that, we see an explosion of API consumption overall. This massive growth is not just vertical, but also horizontal. As we need to also scale the APIs for the different devices that we have, including IoT, cars, medical appliances. Second, we see companies dealing now with dozens of APIs that needs to be managed and governed. Third, the cost of managing these APIs and standardizing them is increasing. For some companies, it might be adopting a new API management solution. For others, it can be hiring more people, scaling the teams around the agile methodologies and product-led organization. So in other words, the main concern that we have is not really how to build applications fast, but how we should do a better API management to enable our product teams to build better APIs. And that will allow them to build applications fast. Um, so how we should do this? So let me introduce you some of the principles that came from my learnings on how to address that issue. The basic answer to that, of course, we all think about summarization. Uh, and the simple reason is that we want to see these APIs um, having the same, um, like, good shape and good looking and to have uh, a consistency in the API landscape. However, standardization, uh, if not balanced, can be dangerous and might kill the creativity of your teams. As Alex Gregg said, in a society that tries to standardize thinking, individuality is not highly praised. In other words, what you need is to look at your API as a composition of different elements, and you need to draw this line between the elements you want to centrally govern and the one you want to decentrally govern. As an example, let's uh, see like the error management, right? So you can have a different pattern on how you send those errors across your uh, APIs. It can even be more complex if you have different API styles. So you can decide what is the best approach to do it. Does it make sense to enforce this or not? Again, it depends on the, the challenges that you have. Another example is the question of how these APIs should be implemented. Depending on the complexity of your product and your business, you might allow some team to choose whatever library or code generator they want, or decide to govern this because of some requirement like 
we want less security issues, we want to speed up EPA delivery, and so on. I see also some companies uh, building some EPA stubs that already integrate with uh, their specific tools. And again, the value here is really to speed up the, the, the development time of, of our APIs. My next principle is the automation of API governance. Well, governance alone is uh, really boring, we all know. And this is not something people uh, really get excited uh, when we talk about. And this is why, in my opinion, this should be fully automated. Another synonym of governance is defining who and when to make these decisions. And depending on the culture and uh, also how your company is organized, this decision can be uh, centrally uh, governed or decentrally governed. For APIs, for instance, uh, these decisions are centralized in what we call an EPA team. In some organizations or, or companies, who we have like names like EPA factory. It can be even split into different teams. We have the EPA governance teams. So this team uh, take care of the API management, including designing, reviewing API design, running and maintaining an API gateway, uh, doing the support, and so on. Unless you have an limited budget, uh, you can scale this model. So you need to hire more people. You need to uh, build the right expertise to execute this API lifecycle. And the API lifecycle is uh, what we call promised land. So this is what we give our users to help them in their journey when it comes to designing those APIs, helping them uh, to publish the APIs, the test APIs, and so on. So, and one of the foundation for me uh, that will allow you to scale this API lifecycle is to see it uh, as a composition of different phases. And you need to decide the right tool to do the right job. Working on the legacy solutions might be limiting the flexibility on how you build uh, APIs in a faster way. Related to that, so my next point regarding the, the automation uh, is to spend some time to build the machinery of your API governance. This will give your API product teams the freedom to make their own decision. Instead of being uh, centralized in a team, you can decide and as long as these decisions are compliant with the codified uh, standards, you are good to go. To illustrate this, take the design phase, for example. Instead of relying on uh, an API design tool to validate your APIs, you can completely codify all the API style rules in a tool like Spectral and add this as a requirement uh, before publishing your API contract in, uh, let's say, an API design repository. Another example is building the pipeline libraries to keep your code base in sync with your API contract. So instead of using the tool, uh, going to the UI, building this integration, you can speed up this process. You can set up your CI/CD libraries to do that job for you. For API exposure, again, it's, it's shifting to a complete decentralized way of, of, uh, of publishing the APIs. So by using the modern API gateways, you can scale that model. Instead of using the traditional API gateway, you can deploy your API directly by using, let's say, the ingress uh, uh, mechanism that we all know uh, in Kubernetes. This model now is supported by major API gateways in the market. We have Kong, Tyke, Ambassador, and Nginx Plus. Of course, this will, model works uh, specifically if you have a microservice application in Kubernetes but it can be also applied for application outside of Kubernetes. With that, the product teams will completely own the API publication part. So no need to go uh, to another tool to expose the, the API or rely on the governance team to do that for you. So now with 
that we have a native integration with Kubernetes, for example, the product teams own the data plan. The role of API governance team uh, have shifted. So instead of exposing those APIs, they can focus on codifying the rules into, let's say, this Kubernetes admission controller that, that, that um, enables you to uh, validate all the data plans for your product teams. So, for example, you can stop uh, any API uh, that will be exposed in, in your landscape that is not compliant with the, like some security standard defined for your organization. If we take operations with this new model, as we have everything declarative, you can shift to a complete GitOps workflow for your API development. This will enable your teams to switch to a Git pull uh, request model. It enables better observability and visibility for your API time. So now that we've talked about standardization, governance, that are too critical to build applications and API fast, my third principle is to help your users to navigate what you've created in your API landscape. But first, you have to ensure that you have a clear visibility on what you already have. And this is the, the problem today. Sometimes you, you need to, to do a deep archaeology into like what you already have. And I still hear some people complaining about bike shading, reinventing the existing APIs. So it's uh, not a 100% solved problem today. And of course, the answer and the solution that we have now is building an API catalog. But the fundamental concern with the API catalogs today is the human factor. You need tick writers. You need active maintenance for it. This might work probably for a reasonable number of APIs, but if we have more than 100, 200, 300, it cannot scale. The reason is this topic is uh, a complex one, it's not an easy one. And it's also a surprise that today for public APIs, we only have programmable web and Google to, uh, to discover those. And also I see the vendors are not helping as well. They are not on the same page. It's also a complex topic because uh, it impacts different actors and you have different journeys on how to see uh, APIs in the landscape. So we have architect point of view, we have the engineer point of view, the analyst point of view, and so on. As far as I know, there are some partial solution or some tentatives to do that. So for protocols, for example, there is a still pending implementation of uh, web API in, in uh, schema.org. In terms of tools, uh, there is this uh, runtime registry uh, API curio that looks promising and it supports multiple schemas and descriptive the language. Um, and there is Amundsen, Amundsen, not Mike Amundsen, but it's a tool for uh, data engineers. Um, and the last one uh, is Superface, but it's uh, still in beta. So to sum it up, uh, there is my takeaways. In order to build better APIs in your organization, balance the way you standardize, as your teams will own this effort as well, not just your API governance team. It's very important. Second, automate your API governance as, as much as possible, as this will free you to focus on helping and train the, the product teams. Last but not least, enable the navigation of your API landscape that will help you to know what you have and adjust the speed to build your applications fast. Thank you.